Hello. I'm doing a, this is just a short version of um, Complete Terminator. I'm thinking of doing uh, a new kind of spin-off series, Complete Terminator, all the comics. Um, going back through comics, you know, looking at certain characters, trends, issues, illustrations, styles, do some deep dives, etc, etc. I've been trying to come up with a, uh, a way that I enjoy looking at comics in an orderly manner, because that's me all over. Um, but I'm, I'm going back to some of the issues that I have already read, and we're looking at some of the characters a bit more in depth, and you know and where the story goes, and the arcs, and all that sort of stuff. Um, but I thought it'd be nice to explore some things that I have found. So I've been looking at this. This is my very first Terminator comic. Uh, this is by Now. Now held the license from 1988 to 1990. Um, and the Now comics tend to focus on um, the future war after Reese and the first 800 went back. So the illustrators, you know, had a bit more freedom to kind of do what they wanted with the story, what happens in the war after the TDE missions, um, without having to delve too much into, you know, the characters and where the, you know, where they're going and what happens afterwards, um, which is more Dark Horse did. Dark Horse sort of took a, a time travel page out of the films books and kind of ran with it. And and now didn't now decide to stick with the future war. There are some very obviously 80s things in here. We have a lot of things heavily influenced by the first film. All Terminators have sunglasses and leather jackets, for instance. Um, but there's something really, really charming about these. So this is my very first one that I picked up in a shop called Time Trek many years ago that is no longer there. And this is issue number six from March of 1988. Uh, I saw this in a shop, I saw the words The Terminator, I saw it in comic form, and I quickly digested it was about the same series that I had at that point only loved for like a couple of years, I think. Um, we've got, you know, resistant soldiers in a swamp. Very exciting. On a quick note, we have this awesome advert at the back for the real Ghostbusters comic that now is also bringing out, which itself I think would fit quite nicely on the shelf here, but I'm not gonna use it as a poster when it is this thing. This is one of my favorite things in my possession. It's not rare particularly, I don't think, um, but it was the first Terminator comic that I ever owned. Okay, now, every now and again, now do have issues with, between illustrators and writers, where there seems to be differences between how characters are presented. Um, this really showed itself in the uh, two issues prior to this, issue four and five, I think, where we took a detour to go to the Amazon rainforest, uh, where a Terminator was building a machine that would kill the rainforest and therefore kill or cut off a huge amount of oxygen to the resistance. It makes sense. So we were talking about all these uh, tribal warriors who ended up fighting the Terminator and they kept changing. We would have characters with a blue eye in war paint in one scene and then no blue paint and different hair in another, but it's meant to be the same character. Very confusing. So I'm going back through this and we had uh, a somewhat similar issue. To be fair, it doesn't really matter because they all die anyway, but it's interesting to note the um, how confusing it took me, uh, it, it, how confusing it was when I was trying to figure out who was who um, and scribbling down my geeky notes. <laughs> so, um, let's put this back. So the, the story of this particular issue is uh, we're returning back to the main thrust of the story, having been on the Amazon for two issues, and we're now in the Florida Everglades. Um, oh, I will just point out, I am appropriately dressed. <laughs> da -dum -dum -da -dum. But it's cold, and I don't actually have a Terminator hoodie, which is a real lacking thing on my part. So Batman. Um, but yes, okay, so we're in the Florida Everglades and we've got two Terminators in a cabin protecting a guy called Defard. Defard seems to be what would later kind of become uh, known as a grey, a human that is giving information to Skynet in, in exchange for his own life, Boo. And he is being protected by two Terminators in this cabin who've transferred there from the swamp and they've just found this old uh, cabin and they're trying to make it as, as secure as possible. And upon this comes a team of resistance fighters. They're from Henson's 3rd Mechanised Infantry Battalion. And they all surround the cabin 
and their orders are to rescue Defard, or if not, to kill him and kill them all to stop the information leaking out. This is in contrast to Dark Horse, where Dark Horse uh, had characters that really didn't like killing other humans because they were so used to killing machines and found killing humans difficult. So we end up with um, yeah with this with this setup, and we've got Terminators in a in a shack and Resistance family going in. The style makes identifying characters a little difficult. The first two soldiers that go into the cabin are identified as being called Dante and Monroe. They have very similar facial structures. Um, they're both wearing green flight jackets. They're both wearing sunglasses for some reason. Very, very similar drawn as well, facially. Um, we just know that one's called Dante, one's called Monroe. We don't know which one's which. One of them throws a grenade to blow the door in and the other one uh, fires a spray of bullets, not plasma, a f uh, spray of bullets um, to give him cover. And the first person then goes in, looks around. Now it's notable that, uh, just as a point, they are identifiable in that one of them has a green helmet on and is bare chested beneath the flak jacket. I don't know why he's bare chested. The other one has a brown stripe on his helmet and has a vest. Okay, the bare chested man goes in and he gets shot immediately by a character I call Captain Number One, one of the Terminators. We don't see much of it. We see his silhouette and we see his feet or his legs, smoke rising. And then the second one goes in with the brown stripe. And that's where we get our first identifying um, feature here is he looks at the presumably dead person and he says, Monroe. Okay, cool. So we now know that the bare chested guy was Monroe and the guy with the brown stripe on his helmet is Dante. Cool. Dante gets really angry. Obviously, he returns fire, and Captain Number One is trapped in a hail of bullets. There's a little moment where it says what the Terminator is like a little, not really a HUD, just text, and it says return fire mode activated, which I think is quite interesting, but it's quite a slow process where he's just taking it and then he can return fire. There is a panel that shows a Terminator, I assume it's a little unclear, returning fire. And then we have Captain Number Two, the other Terminator, who breaks down a door, much like that and shoots Dante. Um, again, it's not entirely clear because the helmet comes off and we can't really see it, but there's only two of these resistance soldiers in the cabin at the time. One is Monroe, who's already been shot, so the other must be Dante. Further to this, Defard, the, uh, the grey, the hostage, screams, Dante, at that point. So we now clearly identify this man, um, who's lost his helmet, as Dante. Okay. A few panels later, we now see a wounded resistance soldier, but someone who is alive. He's got a chest wound, he's wearing sunglasses. And uh, notably, he then thinks, he doesn't speak, but he thinks, uh, oh, that last round took my helmet off. Now, considering the last time we saw someone getting shot was this resistance soldier who loses his helmet, we therefore can assume this is Dante. We've gone from thinking both have been killed to, oh, here's Dante, and he's alive but wounded. Awesome, okay, cool. He then goes over to the other resistance soldier, who we now assume is Monroe, considering that this is Dante. He goes up to Monroe, he lifts him up, and he says, Dante doesn't look good. <sighs> Cause immediate confusion. So now this guy who doesn't have a helmet is Monroe, and the guy that he's picking up is Dante. And further to the confusion, the guy he's picking up has a helmet on, even though the guy clearly identified as Dante when he got shot, lost his helmet. Not only that, but the brown stripe that previously identified Dante is gone. It's just a brown helmet. So Emilio is very confused. So we now know, and we, we know that the, the, you know, the dying guy that's not very good is Dante, because then Monroe drags him out of the shack into the swamp, and alligators start to gather because they're both bleeding, and Monroe's going, Dante! Um, which is just kind of weird. Okay, so now we know that this guy without his helmet, is Monroe. Uh, it's really weird they've done the, the whole non-helmet thing because when Monroe got shot, we didn't even see his helmet. We saw from the back like this, and we saw his legs. So why make such a big thing about losing his helmet? Particularly when we see Dante lose his helmet. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, so we now kind of figured it out. Now, the only way going back on this and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, the only thing I found to identify them is that uh, Dante always is sleeveless. He never has any sleeves, regardless of what he's doing. And Monroe always has his sleeves rolled up. So yes, um, when when the first person goes into the cabin, we know it's Monroe because 
he has his sleeves down, he gets shot. And then when we see this injured person, he has his sleeves rolled up. So that is Monroe. Dante, despite the fact that he loses his helmet and then regains it again without a stripe, um, is definitely Dante because he has no sleeves. <sighs> Shouldn't be that hard. The other thing that made me kind of laugh about this scene is they get out the shack. Bear in mind, this is the, this is the full frontal assault on the cabin. So we've already had a grenade. We've had gunfire exchanges. There are Terminators firing at them in the swamp. And he's now stuck here. They're both bleeding from their wounds. Dante is really unwell, <laughs> bleeding into the swamp. And the alligators start circling. And Monroe shouts out to the other guys. He needs help. He starts listing names, just calling people. Help me. Uh, I can't think. Taylor, Taylor, help me. Yeah. And then all we see them do is basically tell him to be quiet because he's going to give away their position. I don't understand what they're waiting for. We've, we've got exchanges of gunfire. We've got grenades. Gone. Why aren't they all just attacking the cabin? This guy's dying. And effectively, as far as I can tell, uh, Dante and Monroe just die in the swamp because no one could be bothered. It's quite brutal. Um, so there we are. It did amuse me. It took a long time to figure out who was who. Just a fun little side quest on uh, on now comics issue six. Thanks for watching. See you soon.